Everyone, it's Ross. In today's video, I want to give you guys a tour of the fig trees. And we've done a tour actually pretty recently, um, I would say about a month ago. But at that time, there was no fruit set. And I was mainly showing you guys the trees and what they looked like at that time and what your tree should look like. And then also, we talked a lot about pinching and all the different techniques we use to get to that point. Now, I want to show you guys the fruit set because the fruit set's kind of where it's at. We could talk a lot about each individual variety you can really get a feel for you know what's going on with these trees um, so let's do it you know um, I want to show you guys not only the trees here on the patio but also the in-ground trees if there is specific trees that I think are worth mentioning um, we'll show them to you so I guess we could start over here and I want to name like my buddy does in New York City Danny he um, he, na he names every section of his yard or every section of his backyard. Uh, so I guess we could call the side over there, that's the west side, so we'll call it the west side. And uh, I don't know, we gotta come up with names here. That's all I got so far. But uh, let's see, what do we got here? This is my Izmir. And this one comes from Kirill Donov. And I have two of these grafted onto two different rootstocks. And it seems like this one has just gotten a rough head start in the greenhouse, very rough. Uh, you can see the leaves don't look very good. It was kind of shaded out in the greenhouse as well. Um, but it is actually going to fruit. I think there's going to be one fruit off of here. Or maybe it's zero. On the other tree, I'm going to get actually one fruit. So we'll show you that in a minute. But, uh, you know, let me go over there right now and show you guys that tree. So back behind here. And it's really tough to get to these trees, but we have a Franken fig grafted onto raspberry latte. On this limb here is Izmir, and you can see that crazy leaf pattern. It's really distinct, um, and it's got a fig on it. So we will get to see if that one ripens for us. It's supposed to be common, but uh, those people in Bulgaria, man, they don't know what they're doing when it comes to the wasp. Uh, but you can see the variety right next to it on the same rootstock is called Mega Celeste and it's loaded with figs um, that are pretty far ahead, to be honest with you. Um, we actually pinched this twice now and we pinched the new growth now that came out just to get an extra fruit set. I have a really strong hunch that this variety is LSU Tiger, but now I'm seeing on this limb here, five lobe leaves. So, I don't know what that's about, but these leaves over here are single lobed, which is very characteristic of LSU Tiger. And the fig also reminded me for a long time of LSU Tiger. So my hunches are still, you can see actually some mule figs back there on that branch. That's still my big hunch. But again, here's his mirror and you can see that fig forming. And this is a pretty good representation of that crazy leaf pattern that I'm talking about. You can see this. I can't really see what I'm looking at, but you can see this right here. See how that kind of sticks out, this piece? That's a, a nice little characteristic. Also, it's just pretty crazy. Um, and the leaf patterns will change with vigor, varying amounts of vigor. You can see it's less vigorous down here, and as a result, the leaf pattern looks less crazy. Um, let me get out of this crazy space of trees. Okay. All right, let's go back over here, guys. Um, this other tree we have that's with the Izmir in the same pot is called um, Jade. And this is a fig that Lampo actually wanted me to have in Portugal. And I've been growing it out. Um, and last year I got to taste it. We grafted it onto, I think this rootstock is actually um, Negretta Unknown. And I would actually... It uh, looks like here, there is some shoots coming down from that rootstock, which I think I'm going to keep because I want to actually try Negretta Unknown once again. I would like to um, grow it out and give it a fair shot. I realized that uh, a friend of mine up in, uh, or down in, I think, Texas loves Negretta Unknown. The Negretta Picola is what he calls it. This is the Marius Violette de Bordeaux, basically, and he loves it. So it is a Violette de Bordeaux type, and I think one of these shoots are gonna come up, and we'll train that into a tree. 
at least I hope that one of these two shoots belongs to this tree and not the other. So I have to dig around a little bit in there to verify for sure. But um, you can see Jade has actually grown quite a bit. It grew very vigorously in the greenhouse, almost too vigorously. I was surprised that it actually fruited for me. And you can see the new shoots. We pinched those to get more fruit set and it's a lot less vigorous. And as a result, um, we're going to get more fruit set up at the top on those new shoots. But I do remember last year showing um, my buddy Jamie and Lampo the fig off of this tree, the only fig I got, and it really wasn't anything special. And it made me think, based off the photos that I've seen of Jade, that I have the wrong thing, <laughs> that maybe I made a mistake and grafted the wrong variety onto it. Um, but I guess... Things are always, you know, it's, it could be too young to tell, and uh, we'll see. You know, we've got a decent fruit set here that will ripen at a very reasonable time of the year. Um, that is the key. You know, here's another tree as an example as well that you wonder, um, without that greenhouse head start, what it would have done. And you can see we pinched up here, which is now forming a new branch, but I like to take off this top bud this top branch because they usually form in a very strange way um, you can see this limb down here it's actually forming fruits this new limb but I'm gonna take off the tip and the reason I'm gonna do that is because I want all the sugars to go into those fruits I don't want any of that sugar to go anywhere else that the the plant produces and you can see it's Pretty decently productive, this tree. I think it's called De La Senora Hivernenca. So this is the late variety of the De La Senoras. There's two of them. One's supposed to be significantly earlier that could ripen here without a head start. And the other one needs a greenhouse. So I don't know, so far this one actually doesn't seem that late to be honest with you. Maybe we have them all mixed up because uh, there's been some talk about the De La Senora Sinuera that's supposed to be early people are saying that's actually very late and then we have actually a pretty young tree down in here and look at this fruit set that's pretty good that's not bad at all um, what variety is this this is my thermalito so this actually believe it or not my buddy Doug gave me this and I grafted it onto some rootstock I forget so the rootstocks a bit older but what's for certain is that this variety, it sets fruit very easily. Um, and Doug in California where this was found in Thermalito, he actually uh, tells me that it's the earliest fig in his collection or among the earliest figs, which really should translate well here. So what I did was I planted out a Thermalito in the ground. And this one I raised from cutting, I raised a couple uh, from cutting two for friends one for me I think I may have another I'm not sure but you can see there it is in the ground thermalito and it's got a fig on it and it's growing really nicely compared to all the other figs I have here that are supposed to be quite precocious and easily fruit um, thermalito is definitely among them which is a really impressive trait because when these trees die back in the wintertime, I want something that's gonna come back and fruit very easily. I don't have to put in a lot of work. I don't have to use a lot of crazy techniques to get these things to do what I want. Um, so I'm excited for that. Here's my Canadria rootstock. And this thing's a bit of a mess right now because what had happened was that I grafted a number of varieties onto it. Some didn't take, I tried I tried up in here, we did some bud grafts on this part portion. Um, I didn't do any cleft grafts, but all bud grafts all up and along this main chute. And then I gave up. They just didn't take and you can see we have Canadria putting out its own limbs now. Um, and believe it or not, it's going to fruit, which is really incredible because <laughs> this thing, <laughs> I basically have been stopping the growth off of this tree for a long time. And the fruit would have been much earlier, but I am going to get something off of this. So this is not really a waste, even though we grafted, we took a lot of time, a lot of energy out of the tree. Uh, this tree ended up get, get on going, if that makes any sense, and now it's fruiting. So 
Um, that's cool to see. We also have another variety here. This is uh, Cotio Verdal, which is also fruiting. We pinched the new growth that came out. We also had Harry's Crete grafted onto this, and it looked just like the Cotio Verdal. It was almost exact. It would have had fruit actually further ahead than this, and I would have got a really great taste of that variety that uh, my buddy Bishop really loves. And you can see down in here, the graft had broke. I came out here one day, one morning. I regrafted it very quickly to save the variety. And you can see now it's taken. So I saved the variety, but no fruit this year. We also have white Madeira number one. And this is the Frankenfig guys that we did in a video last year. We did a grafting video. And you can see down in here, it's actually fruiting down there. And then we pinch the tip up here on the new growth and it's gonna fruit again. It's gonna put out more figs for us. In the same pot, I decided to plant Golden Rainbow and Iraqi um, Unknown, or the, the Iraqi Palmata Hybrid. And you can see Golden Rainbow has a fig because the both of these I find, in addition to Canadria, to be extremely vigorous. So I figured we'll put three really vigorous trees in the same pot and there won't be an issue in terms of them competing nearly as much. We've got some other new varieties in here that we grew as cuttings and are now in these larger pots. You can see a similar story here. Nothing really to talk about just yet with these guys. They're young trees. Um, you can see more over here as well. In this pot, we have three one gallons that we added in and a five gallon. And this five gallon uh, tree right here, we had grafted Dell's Ermitons and I thought this variety didn't take, but I left on the bud. You can see it's been bud grafted. And I left this bud on the, on the branch, knowing that it took, but I wasn't sure if it was going to grow. And this was sometime in the fall last year that we did some grafting, just as a last resort. Sometime probably in late summer, early fall. The thing never grew, but then I left it on there and the tree woke up this year and it grew from that bud. And I knew that that was Dell's Ermitons. So I'm really excited that this all worked out. But for a while, I didn't really care that I lost this variety. I didn't even try to get it back because it is supposed to be a very late variety. But so far, that's not true. Uh, there's a lot of fruit on here. And in fact, we're also getting more fruit from the new branches that have come out. So that tree is, uh, it's not bad. Um, we have another variety grafted onto the other side of it, which I bet just isn't working out. So it's a bit of a shame, but it is what it is. Um, here's another group of trees that we just got. Some from uh, my buddy, Big Bill. These are from Bass's Gathering. We have some from uh, my buddy, Manny. Shout out to Manny, shout out to Big Bill. Shout out to Chris. What else we got over here? So this is my, one of the first trees I actually brought out of the greenhouse. And it's a frankenfig here. We've talked about it a, quite a bit. This is a frankenfig of Sweet Joy, which is the mother tree, which does not seem very productive, but it is putting out about 10 figs, which really not that great, especially for the size. But then you got look down lower on the tree. You've got something here called um, Figo, Figo Sifeno Escuro, which has an incredible fruit set. It did this last year, where it put out two figs on some of the nodes. Um, so it does that. That's a normal thing that that fig does, but all of it dropped last year. And then here's Strawberry Verte, which we had a branch up here that broke, so we had more growth on that variety, but these are three Breva ready to be ripened. And then down in here is uh, something that's actually dropping figs right now, Scora Valvatsica. It's already dropped one, perhaps even two, and then this one looks like it's going to be the third, so very disappointing to see that. but. Uh, you know, I don't think there's really any reason, which makes me more skeptical on these varieties, is that when you graft them onto a rootstock, that's pretty vigorous. Sweet Joy is a very vigorous, strong rootstock. Uh, and then it's dropping fruit 
and it's it's of age, you know, that really makes me wonder, makes me worry that indeed it's not actually a common fig. Um, so, you know, and the same thing with the uh, Figo Sefenio Oscuro is that it has a reputation of being common, but again, if it's grafted onto a really strong rootstock, there should be very little immaturity period. It shouldn't take very long for it to, uh, to get to a stage in which it can hold its fruit. You know what I mean? I mean, that was one thing that I had tried to do, you know, last year with Pastulieri, which is known to drop fruit at a young age, but is indeed common, is I tried to graft it onto a healthy, vigorous rootstock. But anyway, let's move on. This is my, um, my Cavalieri tree. And this was given to me by Brooklyn Maddie. Hopefully he's watching. I uh, really appreciate getting this tree because it is so tasty. This is an in incredibly tasty variety. These figs have been here, by the way, they don't look that progressed, but they've been on the tree for some time. Um, not the most productive variety, it seems like, as most late figs are here, but uh, also a splitter, but we are getting the figs at a much more reasonable time this year than we have in other years. So I'm, I'm thinking that the, the low vigor this year really helped it out. The greenhouse head start really helped it out. And we've got a nice little fruit set there. We've talked about a great length, my Col de Don Blanc. That's in a 15 gallon size pot. that has a beautiful, beautiful form. You can see it's got nice fruit set. Um, only on particular branches though. Some branches seem more productive than others, and it's just very strange to see. But um, I don't exactly know what the deal is with this tree because it's so beautiful. It seemed to get off to a huge head start. I'm only counting about 37 figs though. I counted them uh, not too long ago. Here we have a, a nice Franken fig grafted onto Fiorone de Ruvo, and um, these are two different Paradisos. Um, and you can see this guy actually had a limb that was somewhere over here that broke off when we took it out of the greenhouse. We had crazy wind that day. It was a really big mistake. But you can see it's putting out new growth here and we pinched it again to get more, more main crop fruits. And then over here on this Paradiso, this thing is a beast. This thing is extremely productive. Also fruiting on the new growth here that it's been putting out up in there after we pinched. And we also have an air layer on here. And the whole reason for the air layer is to bring down the height of this tree, because it's crazy. Whoever, I got this tree from a friend who got this tree from a friend. So whoever initially trained this tree just did a poor job. I guess over the years, this thing was a big mistake. But, um, you know, we're kind of correcting that now. What my plan is actually to air layer this down and reduce the height. And then we're gonna cut this in half with a saw and you can cut the entire root ball in half and create two different trees. But now we're gonna have three different trees up there. I don't need more trees, but maybe I can give one away or have it just to have it. I don't know what we're gonna do exactly, but uh, I don't really like, even if I were to bring this down in height, I still don't like the form of the tree. And ideal scenario is we cut this in half and then this, goes like that. We turn the root ball slightly and then this is now a more upright tree growing in a more suitable form. I mean, it's just kind of freaking crazy how this worked out with this tree, but yeah, not my doing here, guys. Back in here is a new variety we planted along with in this about 12 gallon size pot is my Izmir. This is Izmir Knot. And you can see here the leaf structure on this one. Um, it's looking good this year. It's got a nice fruit set. Excited to see that. So there it is. And uh, also, here's my Socorro Black. My Socorro Black's in a pretty large pot. Um, this is, I think, a 20 gallon. So this is the larger, the largest size I have. Is you could say the Italian 258 is probably not quite at 20. This pot here certainly is in a 20, uh, but most of the other trees here, like this guy is like a 15. Um, I looked it up 
got the dimensions and figured out exactly. These 10 gallon size pots, these grow bags are really actually like seven. They're like seven gallons of soil. So I don't know, the, the difference here in the pot size, even though it doesn't look very different, um, can be quite different. So I don't know. We'll have to figure this out again and really fine tune this. But this is like, I guess one concern is that when you're comparing the trees is that you want to know exactly how much soil is in the, in the pot. You know, this is a quite a productive tree. The Sakura Black is actually one of the most productive trees I have this year. It's got a fig almost on every node on every branch, which is by my definition, productive. You know, this is the only branch right here that I'm not seeing figs on. Um, so this is certainly quite productive. You can see this branch down in here. Even some of the newer branches, we, we cut that back for a friend. We air layered that off last year. But uh, the tree is certainly very productive. More productive than my Italian 258 this year. And more productive by far than the Col de Don Blanc. Um, so who knows? And here's the Italian 258. Honestly, very disappointed by the fruit set this year. I thought it was going to be a lot higher. I think I counted about... 33 fruits on this tree and last year I think we had even more than that which it's kind of crazy because the whole year went by the tree got older we have a better shape to the tree a better form yet we have less fruits so I'm uh, I'm confused something happened with the Col de Don Blanc and the Italian 258 I think when we brought them out of the greenhouse I think the weather at that time if you bring these things out too soon they just don't like it and they don't cooperate in this 20 gallon, we've got Galicia Negra finally fruiting for the first time. It's a highly valued fig, but I don't know why, because I'm going to be honest with you, it's got a lot of seeds, a lot of acnes, not the most pleasurable texture as a result. And uh, I don't think it's really going to be that great. Really, I'm going to be honest. If the interior color wasn't purple, I never would have got went after it. Um, here's my Col de Don Blanc and Negra that actually put out two Brabas and the main crop seems to be relatively productive, although on this branch we're getting nothing. So it is what it is, but for the branch, I'm seeing decent production, I guess. Mm, not really. This is pretty minimal production. And I've been also told that the Col de Don Blanc and Negra, although it ripens a bit earlier than the other Col de Doms, it just doesn't have the same Col de esque flavor or Col de Nam, I don't know. It just doesn't have that, that thing, that wow factor that everybody loves. I don't know. So that's just one opinion though that I heard. We'll see. Uh, this here is my Moscatel Preto. Actually one of my older trees and it was huge last year. And it had a re-sprout from the base because the frost in the fall I think had destroyed this tree but you can see it's put out a lot of fruit this is a good highly setting tree no head start so it's quite productive especially for this zone it doesn't need a whole lot of effort and the fruits good uh, I know my friend Jamie loves it here is my suwadi which is extremely productive this is a on the super end of productivity, I think. Uh, this is, you know, without a doubt, it's putting out a fig on every node. And on quite a few nodes, there's two different figs. I count two figs there. One, two, three, four, five. I'm counting five double nodes on the tree. So not only is it every node, but there's five of them with an extra fruit on it. <laughs> Pretty impressive variety, I'm not gonna lie. It's super rain resistant, very tasty if you let it ripen a long time, but it has to hang a long time. My Planera is a huge disappointment every single year. It doesn't really grow very well. It doesn't fruit, and when it does fruit, the fig splits. So I'm about ready to get rid of it or even just start over, cut it back to the base and let the whole thing start over because this, this is just crazy. And I think I might just do that because I'm not seeing any fruit. I'm not going to get any fruit sets. So what I think I'll do right now, believe it or not, I'm going to take my pruning shears. 
Yeah, I think this is a good idea. Let's get my pruning shears here. Oh. Excuse me, guys. I'm gonna get my pruning shears and I'm gonna cut this thing all the way down to the base. And why am I gonna do this? Well, here's the thing. So this tree doesn't perform well. I know people that have the same tree, same variety, and their tree performs pretty reasonably well. I'm not gonna say it's a superstar, but uh, it's way better than my tree. And there's a theory out there that exists that if you cut back the tree and you get new shoots from the base, um, those new shoots are gonna be a lot healthier and of course the entire tree is gonna be a lot healthier. And you're starting off on the right foot. So it's possible that this tree is somehow damaged or inferior, or the sap flow is being blocked, the nutrients are being blocked in some way, preventing this tree from really being a star. Look at the leaves, I mean, that's not right. That shouldn't be, it shouldn't have any FMV on it. Um, it should be healthy. So I'm thinking we're just gonna chop this thing all the way back. And it doesn't really matter exactly how low you go, except see this portion here where there's a lot of close bud spacing? We want to get below that because this is probably where the nutrients are being tied up. You know, this is better node spacing here, which indicates healthier growth. Again, here's bad close node spacing indicating poor growth. So we're going to cut this thing all the way back. And here's the goal is that now we ain't going to get fruit, but this thing is going to put out some decent growth by the end of the year and it's going to recover and next year. I'm going to get better fruit set, a healthier tree. At least that's the goal. So you live and you learn. We'll see. This is going to be a nice experiment, but uh, some of you guys may think this is a bit crazy, but you never know. You won't know until you try. All right, everyone. I think we're going to end it here on this part of the tour simply because I'm running out of battery. So we're going to catch you guys for tomorrow's part two tour. We'll see you then. All right, guys, we're back at you for part two of the fig tour. We're going to cover a lot of these potted trees here on the patio, probably in this portion of the video. And then part three, we're going to come around to all the in-ground trees and show you guys those. Um, we did a lot of things in the part one, guys, so if you missed it, we actually cut back this entire planera tree all the way down to the base. And that's hopefully to then get a new shoot from the base that's going to be a lot healthier a lot stronger and it's going to set us up next year for a good fruit set. Um, this variety for whatever reason, Planera has not been just really productive at all ever. I've had it now for I think three years. So this is now its third year from cutting and it's been a huge disappointment. I know people that have it and it's done well for them. Um, so we're starting over. Nice little experiment to see if indeed that new shoot from the base is going to perform well compared to what has been here before. And the theory is that a lot of this wood is somehow damaged, preventing that sap flow from getting to the top of the tree, preventing that nutrients from getting to the tree. Um, you know, it's just, I think, a bit of a mess when it comes to some of these figs is that it's just so difficult to really know, so difficult to understand why some trees perform well and some don't. And I think it's a very strange phenomenon. There's another tree back over here, like this guy, my Martinenka Ramada, which has never really performed all that well. It's now finally putting out some decent figs, uh, but still really not the most productive tree, not the most vigorous tree. And you can see down in here, this really, really close node spacing towards the bottom. And I think this has somehow set up the tree. I mean, it's not my, actually my theory, but I, I agree with it. Uh, I think ASC Pete was the one to really come up with this. And that's what he believes is that if you get these trees off to a, a better start, even from cutting, is that they're gonna perform better for you. Um, they're gonna be healthier. They're not gonna have that disrupted sap flow disrupted nutrient flow. Um, so this is one method to get a healthier tree. Rather than just completely starting over, you cut the whole thing back, get a new shoot from the base that's gonna be a lot healthier and hopefully be more productive. 
You can see right in here, uh, the next year I wanna show you guys is my Rasty's Persian Unknown. And this was grafted on the Celeste, a pretty weak rootstock, I must say. It hasn't done very well for me. Um, it had scale, I think, last year pretty bad, and that was a big reason why, but it's got some decent fruit set. It's putting out new growth now. It's recovering nicely. There's a lot of limbs on this tree, and if I had probably one less limb on this tree, the other limbs would have been thicker and probably would have had been covered in, in fruit set. Um, you know, and now instead I only have three limbs with fruits when I could have had three limbs head to toe in fruits. You know what I mean? So it's a bit of a uh, thing you got to play with there and figure out what the exact number of fruiting fruiting limbs you want for that particular year. Here's my uh, DN Manel variety from Ponds that I swear is the same thing as Grease de Saint Jean. The leaf pattern matches exact. Um, and you know what? It's a really tasty fig. It's probably more early to mid season. I'm happy to have it. Uh, moving on right next to it is the Hate of the Argentile. I have two of these. The Hate of the Argentile took a while to get going, guys, but now that it's going, it is going. Um, they say it has a weak root system. I don't know how accurate that is, but that's what people say. But now it's in its third year and it is really performing well. And I have another Hate of the Argentile that we grafted for the purpose of avoiding that weak root system. We grafted it onto another tree. Let me make sure this is it. Yeah, this is it right here. So we avoided, we grafted it onto a stronger root system to avoid that startup time. And you can see it's just as productive as uh, the tree on its own roots. So in the, in the end, I don't know which one's king here, but uh, maybe if I look closer, get a better evaluation. It seems like the tree that was grafted is further along. The figs are further along and they didn't, they got an equal head start so for me, I think they're equally as productive, it seems like it, in terms of the fruit per branch. I think it's pretty much the same, but uh, this tree is much further ahead. So maybe grafting it onto a stronger rootstock in the end is probably a good idea, but it's only one year's worth of data. Um, can't really say for sure. Moving on, here's my Smith. This is my mother Smith tree. We chopped it back, cut it back quite a bit, took off a lot of air layers, and it's just not putting out figs this year for me. All it wants to do is grow and grow and grow. And you can kind of see all that new growth down in here. Pretty spindly growth. This stuff's real thick, really healthy growth, which is nice to see, but I want fruit, guys. <laughs> this is like uh, one of my favorite figs, so. To not get fruit off of this, a bit disappointing. You can see though, they the nodes are a bit misleading. They kind of look like they're gonna fruit, but they don't. So I don't know, I guess it's maybe, uh, oh, there's a fruit being formed back here. So maybe I will get some fruit off of this. We did pinch out the new growth. Maybe I should do that now. I mean, what's the worst thing that can happen, right? Just pinch out these, these tips here, just in case it, it's the tree is going to change its mind. It definitely seems like it's slowed down a bit. The sap flow has somehow slowed down, so that's a good sign. But overall, the uh, fruit set on this particular tree is going to be low, and it's going to be at a later point of the year. Now, if I go and take you guys over to the five-gallon size trees, the air layers that we took off the mother tree and show you guys how the air layers are doing, really not the largest air layers in the world, but look at this, they've got fruit on them. I actually sold one of these to somebody, so they there should look just like mine. And look, look at all this fruit on these young air layers. It's pretty incredible actually. There's, I would say at least, on this particular tree, there's probably about 10 fruits. That's really good. About another 10 fruits here. That's really good for such a young tree, young air layer. We just kind of let them bush out and do their thing. They don't really look the healthiest though. So I wonder if the soil, there's not enough nutrients in here. Maybe I need to feed these guys again. I don't know, but uh, 
pretty impressed and it's just a nice little comparison a nice view i think and it really tells a big story there is that when you cut the trees back hard is that they just want to grow and grow they don't want to fruit it's the same thing with this planera is that by cutting it back it's going to send up a nice vigorous shoot that's not going to want to fruit so it's this, you know same thing with the smith whereas the air layers that have that closer node spacing that uh, are not as vigorous the growth was slower and as a result they're now fruiting so what a difference it's nice to be able to see that i think and you guys i'm sure appreciate it here is my sunbird unknown this is a english brown turkey type i'm pretty certain that all the english brown turkey types are pretty much very similar i mean you know they, they've got like lava decks brown turkey they've got uh, uh olympian you've got um soda sicilian you've got this sunbird here there's a there's a ton of them there's at least 15 there's uh, let's see, Sweet George. They all just have that same caramelized peach flavor that people talk about. And this one I had particularly picked up because it was raved about to have a peachy flavor to it. Sunbird unknown, and um, that's why I got it. But I'm I'm almost certain that they all just have that. And you can see it's pretty decently productive, grafted onto Olympian. Olympian was a tissue culture fig that really hasn't done well for me at all. The productivity is garbage. So what I'm going to do actually is we graft it onto this, this limb over here. We need to graft this limb later today. And then underneath the soil was a lot of suckers. But what I'm going to do is come uh, wintertime, come dormancies, we're going to cut this in half. We'll have two different trees uh, all grafted onto Olympian. I don't like the shape of this necessarily uh, I guess it's kind of similar to how a lot of my trees are anyway but uh, I don't know maybe I'll leave it I don't need more trees that's for sure but certainly for the sake of form this is not really the greatest um, here we have my Mary Lane seed list that we now have grafted new varieties onto it we've got Juale Noir and hopefully this one takes because I'm basically out at this point if this doesn't take We've also got another variety here, uh, Preto Taurus Novas from my buddy Jamie. So this one we grafted last year and failed, but it should be a pretty early variety. Um, and I actually have one that I think I'm going to put in the ground. It should be pretty rain resistant. Behind it here, behind the Sunbird is my Star Violette de Bordeaux type. This is Petite Albique. See, it's got a nice Braba crop down there, four Brabas, and the fruit set is nothing to uh, nothing to scoff at, guys. It's all up and down the branches. Every leaf has a corresponding fig. So, without a doubt, Violette de Bordeaux is the most or one of the most productive figs that I have. That's absolutely. I don't think anyone can argue with that. Um, we also have uh, my Blava Campanera, which is really not that tasty. It's pretty poor in terms of flavor. It is early, it does produce well. However, it's now rootstock. We have a variety here called Luzano that we grafted onto that. Here's my Verdino del Nord from uh, Vladimiro Rocco. And this thing is supposed to be quite tasty, but we've got a lot of limbs on it. And as a result, the limbs are not really um, that thick and therefore we don't have the greatest fruit set so this year is kind of a building year for this because i've air layered this off last year for a buddy for a friend um, i think i actually put maybe even two air layers on this i'm not sure so we're rebuilding kind of like smith that we chopped the whole thing back this is a bit of a rebuilding year but we're getting that form that we want and then next year we're going to come in here and it's going to be roaring it's going to be really productive so productivity cannot really be accurately defined on this particular tree but it is putting out fruit it does seem quite early to me it seems like a green hardy chicago in terms of flavor here we have the detrace displace got off to a really slow start to the season very slow we also air layered this we also took off a lot of cuttings so this is also a rebuilding year for this tree uh, we have one of them in the ground believe it or not and that tree is going to fruit, I think. We pinched that one. 
Here we have another tree that we just cut back too hard, and this is Zephyro. And we have one Zephyro in the ground, we sold some cuttings, we've pretty much tried to propagate it the best we we could, and you can see it's just not growing. These other limbs on the tree took over dominance at higher points and are now just taking control. And the Zephyro is not willing to cooperate. Here's Cardinio, which will fruit for us this year. We'll find out exactly what the deal is with that one. And then also Dulce Calderai, which is also supposed to be common. Here back in here, we have a, um, another Franken fig of different Italian varieties. These are, um, well, this one's actually dropping its figs. What is this? This one's Soretto, and I'm pretty sure Soretto is not common. So this pretty much confirms it for me. Um, Cause this is on a pretty strong rootstock. Uh, I think actually the fruits have been dropping. There was more fruits than that. Yeah, it's been dropping for quite some time. So. Something happened with this tree and it doesn't like this environment or it's just not common, which is, I think, probably the, uh, the truth. But we've got not just the uh, Soretto here, but there's three different types of Brogiotto Nero, Romano, Masseria, and then the standard Fiorentino that we see most common um, by different names, different strains of it. There's so many strains of Brogiotto Nero. We showed you guys the uh, Martinenka Ramada, if that is indeed Martinenka Ramada. Here is a, a young Italian 258 that's, believe it or not, putting out some decent fruit. And um, I only see two so far, or three so far, four so far, I'm counting. However, I wasn't expecting much because this tree just seemed to want to grow, and that was it. I called it a day, but the new growth coming out. Uh, we pinched that one and that's going to put out some new figs. So we'll probably get an additional maybe about six to eight figs off of that tree that isn't already there right now. Uh, we have also have over here another Violet de Bordeaux. Again, just stupidly productive trees. You can see three Breba and then all up and down it is covered in main crop. Also extremely tasty, very rain resistant, always reliable. It is like the king of all figs for the most part. I mean, there's one fig, this is like a no brainer to me. Back behind it is the Daloso. We've got one of these in the ground that was off to a pretty horrendous start this year. But the one in the pot should fruit. It's giving us new growth here that's slowed down its vigor and therefore um, is putting out some fruit for us after we pinched it. What else do we have over here? This is something called Nalaga that Wills is in love with. We pinched it quite a while ago and it took a while for these fruits to form. So I don't think it's really the earliest variety to be honest with you, but uh, it is putting out fruit and I think Wills loves it. He says it's very productive or, or very rain resistant, I think is what he was mentioning. So that's a really important thing in my climate. Um, I can't remember if this one got a head start. I don't think it did. Yeah, actually it didn't. Because behind it is a Baccarinho. This is supposed to be an early fig in Portugal and it's already got fruits on it. Really good to see. Again, I would say medium to poor productivity so far. Just not a tree that's performed all that well. It just seems to want to grow and grow but now it's finally slowed down a bit and uh, we're getting to see fruits. What else do we have here? Uh, this is an interesting view, I guess, of this fig. Look how productive this guy is. All up and down these branches, head to toe. This is something called uh, Fico Gentile, and this is the European version, I guess, or the, the version that has a really blood red interior. So it's like an Adriatic type style of fig, green skin, red interior. I'm sure it's quite good and it's very productive. I don't have to do anything to this thing. Um, it just wants to fruit, which is good to see. Another productive variety, or I don't know if this is one variety or not. Actually, it looks like it is. Let's see, what, what is the name of this? This is Pendolino Rosso from Italy and look how 
dense the fruiting is on this. There's fruit everywhere. So we'll see if that one's common. I'm not entirely sure, to be honest with you. Um, yeah, it's a bit of an experiment with these varieties to see if they will indeed fruit, to see what they will actually do for me. It's a bit, it can be a dis bit disappointing. Here we have uh, something called Gallo. And this guy's doing pretty decently. We got fruit set. Not bad. And it's supposed to be an early variety. It's supposed to be hardy. But the fruit is pretty small. And you can look up a lot of information on uh, planetfig.com on that particular variety. Here we have another Franken fig right next to it. This is uh, Capal Kurt Negra, which, believe it or not, I thought was going to be more productive than it is. But up in here, there's a lot of new growth that this tree put out that we have since pinched. And it should put out really good fruit set for me because so far it really hasn't done what I had expected. So we'll see. And then on the other side of it is, uh, I think, Excuse me, guys. This is Borgia Soak Grease. Hasn't grown all that much. All right, this is actually Borgia Soak Rosa. And this is Borgia Soak Blanca Negra right here. So three different ponds figs on the same tree to see if uh, they would ripen here in time. And I think we didn't, I think we did give them a head start. So what's this other tree? Sister Madeline's Green Greek. Man. I have to look at my records, but I'm pretty sure that we gave them a head start, which is a bit disappointing, but you can see Sister Madeline's putting out some fruit for us. Not too hopeful on that variety. It should be pretty standard uh, Adriatic type. Here we have just a standard rootstock that I've been trying to graft different varieties onto. I had some other rootstocks here that really didn't do well, and I gave one away, and. The other two are LSU Tiger, and we're going to put them in the ground. I said, you know what, let's just stick them in the ground. Um, here we have uh, Roca Nera. This is from my buddy Joe. And this tree is actually, I think, going to put out one fruit for me. And that was my goal, was to just get at least one fruit. You can see it right up in here. It's probably going to form. Um, so we'll get to taste this, see what the deal is. The form has not been good. <laughs> I need to really fix that tree come dormancy, prune it, prune it well. Behind it is uh, Chater Green, which John Chater in his collection, this is the one fig I think he bred or he grew or something like that. And I got a hold of it just to see what the deal was because it looks actually pretty good. The issue is that it just wants to grow. It doesn't want a fruit. And we have new limbs here, new growth that we pinched. Um, after we had pinched it prior to see if we could get fruit set, but it's not looking good. Here we have a uh, Hate of the Argentile. We showed you guys this guy. Quite productive. Surprisingly very productive. And then here back over on this side is a hardy Chicago type called the uh, Vibo Valencia. All the hardy Chicago types are quite productive. Even on these thinner limbs here you can see the productivity the new growth that's coming out we pinched that after we pinched it before so we're getting two crops essentially off of that tree next to the uh, hate of the argentile is a franken fig of yellow long neck which is what you see here it's got these really big leaves very vigorous variety serrated edges to it and then we also have Albo grafted onto it. Both really large yellow honey figs. Here's Albo down here, and it didn't grow that well. But what did, and what I wanted to grow well, was actually the rootstock, which is Gros Monstrus de Lipari. And we got a shoot to come off the rootstock, and now we're going to recover that variety. So that's one thing about grafting is that you can always get the rootstock back if you really want. Um, there's always opportunities, I think, or techniques you can do to get that rootstock back. Here we have a variety called, uh, hmm, is this Yubon? Yes, this is Yubon. And Yubon, I have a feeling, is a Celeste type, a type of Celeste, which is great to hear because I love Celeste. And all the different Celeste types, there's, there really are amazing figs in my climate. Um, but... I don't know for sure, and I don't think it's going to fruit for me, which is very uncharacteristic 
of Celeste, especially since it's grafted onto a pretty strong rootstock. There's no reason why this tree shouldn't be fruiting right now. And the leaf structure doesn't really look too much like Celeste, but this leaf sort of does. I don't know, maybe we can get one fruit off of this. My buddy Vinny in England, if you're watching, shout out to Vin. He's got that fig and at least for my eye, it looks like a Celeste type. But uh, this one comes actually from Thierry in France. Uh, he was, I think, the founder of that fig. And uh, I'm excited to have it. A lot of his varieties, I think, do really well here because his, his climate translates very well to this location, I think. Um, here we have something called um, Neruchiola de Elba. I have one of these in the ground that put out 10 Breba, and a lot of them have dropped. And my buddy Raphael, was, he was right. He was right. Behind it, also grafted onto this Franken fig is uh, Coldenom Grease VS. And Coldenom Grease VS, I'm like 99% sure, is indeed LSU Scott's Black. And uh, I've looked at the fruit of a Coldenom Grease VS. I've had about 12 or so fruits off of a Coldenom Grease VS. <laughs> My buddy Maddie fed me <laughs> so many fruits from that tree. And then I, of course, had many LSU Scots Black over time, but this year, the fruits really remind me of the fruits that Maddie gave me um, off his tree. Here's the Neruchiola de Elba that I was talking about that's in the ground. It's putting out main crop, and I have a feeling, though, when you pinch these trees, specific varieties will drop their Breba because they're putting out main, all that energy is being diverted, and they just like to drop them. We still have four Breba though that are holding on so who knows what will happen but uh, out of 10 so far that's not looking good not looking good what else is dropping is my sanguinato you can see sanguinato right in here it's kind of the next tree along the way you can see these figs they, they don't look like they're going to hold on they look like they're getting a lack of nutrients somehow um, and I think, again, maybe it has something to do with the fact that up here we pinched it on this new growth and it's then taking away the sugars from maybe these points. And maybe that's why they're, they're dropping. Uh, they didn't drop yet, of course, but not a good sign. Also, Sanguinato could be a Smyrna, although my buddy Gary in California, he lives in a portion of California, Northern California, that doesn't have the wasp. And I know he doesn't have the wasp, so uh, I certainly trust him that he's ripened this and isn't 100% sure that it's common, but if he's ripening it, I'm uh, leaning towards the fact that it is indeed common. Here we have uh, Cefeno Preto. This is a beautiful fig, beautiful, beautiful fig. Could be a very top tier fig in terms of flavor. And I have a feeling it's very similar to Colonel Lippmann's Black Cross. I have a feeling that is an accurate statement, but we're gonna find out. Um, I have, like I said, I have a hunch that they're the exact same fig, but who knows. This here right next to it is Raven de Calci, one of my two Raven de Calci grafts that we did. We also just planted one in the ground because it's very similar in terms of flavor to a Black Madeira, but quite different. Um, well, maybe not even in terms of flavor. It's it's just very different. It's a very different fig from Black Madeira, even though it may look like it. That's that's what I think it, um, if I recall correctly. The look of it is definitely similar to Black Madeira, but it's just not. Um, it's putting out Breba, which is interesting. And then the main crop is, of course, forming here. And I have a very productive tree on the other side over here of Raven de Calci that's way more productive in the main crop than this. The Brabas really, I think, slow down the main crop quite a bit. Same thing with the LSU Scots Black over here. The main crop is really far behind um, compared to a lot of my trees, but the but this tree is already ripening Braba. Like they're they're basically ripe. So theoretically, the main crop should only be about 30 days behind it. 
But I would say the main crop's about 60 days behind the Breba. So really crazy difference. Here is my yellow niches that my friend Bishop loves. He just said that in his video that the whole thing in his climate, every single fig ripens before August, which doesn't make any sense, but maybe he misspoke. Um, certainly seems very early, very precocious. Um, I didn't really enjoy the figs last year off of this tree. It does look a bit unique and it should have a unique flavor. Um, but you know, the tree was young, so we'll see. It was certainly watered down, too much water in the pot. And I think that really affected the flavor last year. Here is uh, my Brandon Street Unknown. This one comes from Ben B. So for those of you guys who are big fans of Ben B and his YouTube channel, it's a pretty productive tree, guys. I like it quite a bit. It reminds me a lot of something between uh, Improved Celeste and something between a Hardy Chicago, between those two figs. Very early, quite productive, and it's a lot healthier this year. I, I'm really enjoying, really happy to see that. Um, here we have a fig that my buddy Devin sent me. This is large purple Vignes, and it's dropped figs for a number of years, unfortunately. And it's dropped so many figs that I just wonder if it's a Smyrna, but I know for sure that that area of France that he got this fig, it just doesn't have the wasp. So for me, I don't really understand it, um, why it's dropping figs, but we're giving it another year, maybe even another two years to see really what the deal is. But we pinched it here just to see if we could get something formed. And it's really gone through hell because we grafted this many times, try to get something else on here that wasn't gonna drop. But in the end, I decided to stick with it because I just realized that there is no wasp over there. Just, there shouldn't be anyway. Here we have a, uh, a really productive fig. What is this? Oh, this is um, <laughs> this is another possible Smyrna or San Pedro. This is something called um, uh, ooh, what is the name of this? Fergola nera, and you can see it grows so well. Look how healthy the the leaves look. They are so green. So, so this is my Fergola nera, and you can see just how incredibly healthy this guy is. It's so productive too. But last year it dropped a crazy amount of Breba. I would say like six Breba, and it also drops a lot of main crop, like 20 or so main crop. It's a very vigorous tree, very healthy tree. This one comes from Italy, and the person it comes from definitely has the fig wasp, so they don't really know if this is common or not, but uh, I can guarantee that it's lo not looking good. <laughs> so we're gonna see, this is the only year I'm giving it at this point. The only potential, I guess, from this point is that when we cultivate the fig wasp, we colonize that in the greenhouse, which is doing really well, believe it or not. I'll show you guys that tree when we get to it. But uh, that's doing really well, and I guess the potential is that those wasps could pollinate this tree and we could get some actual fruit off of it. But I don't know, man. Is it really worth the effort for these things? You know, when I've got something like Violet de Bordeaux and Azores Dark and Hardy and uh, Smith, you know, it just doesn't make sense, I think. Here we got our Simon Unknown. We chopped this tree way back to get as many cuttings as I could for Simon. Um, and you can see the double node fruiting here that's happening. That's very characteristic. He's got these uh, like single lobed or even tri lobed leaves on this variety. This one comes from a very cold place in the Middle East. And uh, yeah, I'm pretty much saving this variety for him. I have one that I'm propagating specifically for him. I also have one in the ground planted over there that we're gonna see just how cold hardy it is and just how early it is. It's a very strange fig. This one doesn't behave like any other fig I have. And I think it's because it has a lot of Palmata genes in it. It's probably a hybrid if I had to guess. And then here we've got on this side, this is my Franken fig of, well, Bial LSU Purple, and this here is Osborne Prolific. And the three of them, Osborne Prolific, Bial, LSU Purple, they all have a similar flavor profile. So I decided to graft them all on the same tree 
to then determine which of the three I think has the best flavor of that particular flavor profile. And so far, Osborne just wants to grow and grow, doesn't want a fruit. It's called Osborne Prolific for a reason. It is prolific. And then you can see over here, Bial isn't cooperating either, but we've pinched it and you can see there is fruits forming up there. So that's good to see. But we had to pinch it and then we had to pinch it twice to get any fruit, it seems like. Weird how this tree is op operating. LSU Purple is indeed fruiting. And that's good to see. So at least, I think we're gonna get at least some fruits off of all three of them. However, they're not gonna be the earliest fruits. They're probably not gonna be the tastiest or highest quality fruits. Next in line is my Dr. Gawadi and my White Triana, both in the same pot, both very similar flavor profile, similar leaf patterns, um, similar figs, but White Triana so far is king. It is so good, and I should make many copies of it. We have, in all honesty, one in the ground, and that's about it, other than this tree. So we should really get on this. Um, maybe I'll put an air layer on this tree because it is really just so productive. It tastes just like Col de Nom Blanc. Just as thick, just as gooey and jammy. So good. What's really surprised me though is the productivity of the Dr. Gawadi. My buddy Big Bill, shout out to Big Bill. He's a big fan of the Doctor. And uh, let's see, what is next? My wire here is all tangled up in these leaves. All right, what are we looking at? This is, um, hmm. I have to look, guys, I don't know offhand. Oh, this is Sister Madeline's. We already looked at this guy earlier in the video. Let's keep going. Here's my De La Roca. Really didn't do well when we took it out of the greenhouse. You can see the limbs are burnt. And it's healing over now, but really lack of productivity because of that. This tree just, every year just gets smashed in some way. Something happens to it and the productivity is weak. It's late. It seems earlier and more product, product, uh, productive than uh, the Col de Noms, and it also tastes very similar to the Col de Noms. But I can't really get a good year with this tree. I can't get it to work. Um, but here you can see the Col de Nom Noir that I have. And I thought this tree was gonna be much more productive than it is, and it's just a huge disappointment. We got one fig. One fig. The Col de Noms, man, are so disappointing. Uh, back in here is a really strange tree. <laughs> what is this? What is this guy? Man, finding these tags is a bit of trouble here. It's so many, okay, this is Medieval Yavor. This is another fig that my buddy Devin got me. And this one looks very interesting. Again, not fruiting. It seems just like it just wants to grow and grow. It's kind of similar to Osborne in that sense. Some other trees that I have. Back in here is Verdesca, very small tree, grafted, not growing very well. And if I look at this location here and just pull some leaves away, you're, gonna, you're not gonna believe what the density of figs are in here. <laughs> uh, it's, it's pretty insane. This is a Franken fig of three different ponds varieties here. We have like Mare to Do. Mare to Do is up here, quite productive. We've also got things over here like, uh, let's see, De La Gloria. We've got another one here, Blavetta Campos and um, Borda Barraquare. And all four of them on this Franken fig are extremely productive, close node spacing, didn't grow very much. And as a result, we got a lot of fruit. And it's on this rootstock called Yellow Lebanese. And I think that probably has a lot to do with it. Next to that, Oh, here's another limb, by the way, guys. Look at that. This is of, uh, I think, Blavetta Campos. Right next to that, though, is my Sucret, I believe. This is Sucret. Double check. No, this is Bavera Branca. Good thing I checked. <laughs> but you can see here, it's doing real well. Huge leaves. Very, pretty productive variety, I would say. Somewhere, mm, yeah, I would say somewhere medium to high productivity. However, 
it seems to be a bit late and the figs take a long time to ripen. If you have a, a fig wasp, this is an incredible fig. It has a, a flavor, by the way, that is unlike any other fig that I've got for the most part. Um, it's like a, a true honey fig combined with fruity berry notes. Very strange and caprified, I'm sure it's incredible. Back in here, we've got another super vigorous tree. This is my Calderwood Unknown. Look at the leaf. Very similar to LSU Tiger. It's believed to be LSU Tiger. I also believe this to be similar to, um, let's see, to Mega Celeste that we showed you guys in part one of the tour. And then down in here behind it is GM 175. Quite an interesting fig, I have to say, from the island of Malta. Georgie had introduced this one years ago. Very vigorous tree that this one has been off to a huge head start. Probably more than any other tree I've had is the head start that that one got. Let me bring you guys back this way. We missed a couple of trees. Walking through here is becoming challenging, especially with a wire. Yep. All right, I'm gonna bring the wire with me. Okay, what can I show you guys over here? We are just got so many trees to show you guys, it's insane. Um, let's see. What is down in here? We're not getting, it looks like off this tree, the greatest fruit set, almost nothing. We may not get a single fig off of this. That's disappointing. Now let's see what the culprit is. Early violet, wow, that's a shocker because early violet I've been considering to be an, a hardy Chicago type, but I've also looked at it and said, wow, that doesn't really exactly look like a hardy Chicago. So it's a strange variety. Very early, should be very productive, but so far I'm not seeing that. And uh, that's a bit disappointing. I'm gonna pinch this just in case. I do, it does look like we see some double nodes and I usually don't pinch unless I see double nodes. So I'm surprised that uh, it hasn't already fruited from when we pinched it the first time. But we'll see. Also next to it, largely unproductive. On the same rootstock, mind you, is Negra de Age. Negra de Age is not going to fruit, it looks like. That's a huge disappointment. Because I really wanted to taste this variety. It's got very few seeds in it. Very similar to the Col de Doms. And that's a really valuable trait in the flavor of figs and the texture of these figs. This wire is really bugging me, guys. Um, what else do we have in here? I think this is my Borges Soak Grease. We've also got a couple Borges Soak Greases in ground and pots from different sources. We have Violet Sapor to uh, compare. We also have here uh, Rosso di Triani, I think is the name of this one. Let's see. Oh no, this is Rosalino. We also have Rosso di Triani in a different pot. But you can see it's pretty decently productive. It's supposed to be an early fig in Italy. Who knows? We'll get to taste a lot of these figs, guys. A lot of these varieties. This one's also fruiting. What is this? This is Igo. Not fruiting heavily, but it is fruiting. And that's, I think, good enough for me with a lot of these is just to try them. Look how just stupidly productive this is. We showed you guys that already. That's Pendolino Rosso. And here's some other Italian varieties like uh, Leopoldo Abruzzo. This one down here is, uh, let's see if I can see this, Verdone. This is a different Verdone though than what most people are used to. The standard Verdone, but unsure if this is even going to fruit, which is very disappointing because I'm not 100% sure if it's even common. So it would be nice to get some kind of confirmation there. You know, that's kind of the goal with this is to really figure out, get a good idea with these varieties and figure out, all right, are they common? Are they tasty? Do they fit some kind of void somewhere? Here we have uh, Encanto. It doesn't look like it's gonna fruit off to a horrible head start this year because the uh, the Plint Nero from Frances French Francisco just really didn't, it really took over. It also dropped to Breba, by the way, but the main crop's looking very productive. It's a very healthy tree. 
He told me last year mine dropped because my tree's not healthy. Well, if it drops this year, I don't know what your excuse is because uh, it's certainly very healthy. And, um, you know, that'll be two years in a row. Even the Brava falling off, which is unusual. Here we have Sucret, which is a star. This is a great tree. If I can get it not to split, this is an incredibly tasty fig. Has a similar flavor to the Col de Doms that could replace the Col de Doms in my yard at least. Behind it is a uh, Fico Nida. And um, this was not a good fig last year, but it's been very productive. I let it grow. I was going to graft onto it. Not a very tasty fig, but we'll see if it changes. I'm sure it will change quite a bit. Here we have Sandrosa, which we kind of skipped over. It is extremely extremely productive vigorous all up and down these limbs back in here it's covered in fruits it's got new limbs that we pinched wonderful productivity on that variety for sure all right now we're free of the uh the mess here guys i can back up <laughs> i got room to walk here is uh, another raven to calcium that i told you guys about remember how i said i have one that's a bit more productive definitely is we've got vernino back in here also grafted with the raven calcium that's not going to fruit and then um what is this tree this is my de la cassetta doesn't seem to really like me this tree um also seems very similar in ponza's book at least it looks very similar to like my white triana Dr. Gawadi, the Canadria, Lyndhurst White, very similar styled fig, but we'll see. Um, if that's true, we got fruit forming down here that should be relatively early and others that are coming in now that'll probably ripen in mid to late September, which is a bit disappointing that they're gonna be that late, but it is what it is. What else do we have to share with you guys? This is my Violette Dauphine, and uh, this tree is a good grower. You can see nice figs in here finally are forming off this younger tree. And uh, I have lots of these actually to sell because this is a really tasty fig. I had know that it's a tasty fig, so I went ahead and propagated quite a few of them in preparation. Actually, there's limbs over here too, I didn't even realize. so. This thing's growing really well, actually, and it seems more productive than I had originally thought. But um, I'm excited for the fruit, most of all. And uh, if the fruit lives up to it, we'll start to sell these, these trees. Um, what is this back in here? Coldenom Roja has really been a disappointment. We're gonna get almost nothing off of this. Although we did pinch off this growth here, it should be forming figs. But overall, very disappointing. With these greenhouse head starts, man, you would think that the cold denoms would do well. It's just so much hotter in there. It's so much better for what they're adapted to, but they just don't. Especially when you take them out of the greenhouse, it's a mess. So I don't know what to do here, but here we have uh, my Fico Rubato, which actually put out a fig quite early I was very happy to see that, considering how late this fig is supposed to be. It doesn't grow very well, but it is putting out about five fruits for me. That's good enough for me, because we're going to get pretty good quality off of this tree. But what I've done is I've grown a similar fig called Verde Paso. It's the same thing as Fico Robato, but it's way healthier, it seems like. And I have another tree, like I said, in a pot, Verde Paso, that's hopefully gonna eventually replace this one because this is just not very productive, it seems. But it's good to see that this is a late variety putting out figs like this with the uh, the greenhouse. And then here's Sandrosa, that's just a freaking, just a beast, guys. Absolute beast. Um, back in here, we have uh, Victoria, which is not fruiting. It just wants to grow and grow and grow. And then here is Red Libya. And I was tempted to get rid of this as well. I mean, I had plans for a lot of rootstock this year, but I mistakenly put a lot of the rootstock in the greenhouse and they got to off such a head start 
and they're putting out all this fruit that I said, you know what, let's just get the fruit this year. Forget about grafting, forget about trialing so many new varieties. Let's just enjoy ourselves this year for a little bit. Not that we aren't grafting anything, but back in here is, uh, let's see, what is this guy? We have GM, a GM, uh, a GM Frankenfig, but this is Del Sen Wami Gran. Really not all that productive this year, but it is putting out fruits now. So maybe the production's a lot higher than I had anticipated. Yeah, it looks like actually it's getting a fruit almost on every node. So that's good to see, but we're so late at this point for these fruits to be forming. It's pretty disappointing. The GM figs back in there is a Franken fig. There's three of them, and they are immensely productive with the greenhouse. I mean, their their fruit sets off the chain. It's like GM 25, GM 125. Let's see what's the other one back in here? GM 149A. Actually, that one's gone. That one broke off last year. This one here is 172. So. I don't know, quite impressive, those GM figs from Malta, from Georgie's collection. And then back over here is something called Martinenka. This is the non-Ramada version of Martinenka. So I'll get to taste Martinenka of Ramada regardless if my panache is indeed panache or if it's Martinenka Ramada. It seems very productive. The greenhouse really helped out. This thing grew like nuts. And uh, I really don't like the form, so we're gonna chop off that trunk there. I let this thing just grow because it got killed all the way down to the base um, two years ago. Behind it is my Coldedom grease. Again, not very productive, these Coldedoms, man. I don't know why that is, but you can see some forming in there. So that's, this one's actually not bad compared to the others. Coldedom grease putting out quite a bit of fruit. And then the other Coldedom that's actually doing reasonably well is my Coldedom Blanc, which, where is this guy? I think it's right here. I think we're looking at it. Yeah, this is a different Coldedom Blanc I have that seems a bit more healthier, younger, and it seems more productive per node, per branch. It seems to be doing a lot better. The leaves look a lot healthier. Um, it just seems way happier. So I don't know what the deal is, but I would like to figure out the these, these situation with these cold adams because they don't really put out that much fruit. Here is a, something called black Portuguese, which I'm pretty sure is like the original Violetta. This one was in the Belle Claire nursery and I saved this tree. Um, I ended up getting this from Peter Kanderi and he sent me this as the last cuttings that he had and I sent him one back, one for myself. And now we have essentially saved the variety. Um, here we've got another tree behind it, which is, man, what is this guy? Cavalieri. So I've got two Cavalieries, guys, because it is a credit. It's just an incredibly tasty fig and this one, we didn't really air layer all that much. We didn't really do much to it. And it seems to be way more productive, way more healthier. Um, and it's just happier. So I think air layering and just doing random things to your trees can really hurt the, uh, the overall shape. We want them to really grow strong, I think, at a young age. And that's what we started off in this video with the planera. We talked about chopping it all the way back. Um, here we got LSU Red, and this is the last of the potted figs I want to show you guys. So LSU Red putting out quite a few, quite a few fruits, and in the same pot is the LSU Scots Black, which we've talked about at pretty good length. It's putting out a lot of Braba. The main crop is very dense, very densely productive in here, and there's a lot of limbs. I mean, this is probably my most productive tree this year, LSU Scots Black. Seven Braba, a crap ton of main crop. And LSU Red's not, really not that productive, believe it or not. Um, I was hoping for more, but there really isn't that many figs on this. And maybe there's too many limbs, and that's my mistake, but 
overall, I'm not liking LSU Red in many respects. So, okay, guys, that was the tour. That was a long one, man. I just talked for probably close to an hour. All right, guys, take care, and uh, hopefully you enjoyed this one. We're going to do part three tomorrow, and we'll show you guys the in-ground trees. Um, that one's going to be a lot quicker. Show you guys just individual trees that I think have done well and are you know kind of where they're at in the season right now. So uh, stay tuned for that. We'll see you tomorrow. Hey guys, it's Ross. In today's video, we're gonna be looking at the in-ground trees. The in-ground fig trees is part three of the summer solstice fig tour of 2019. And in part one and part two, it was all about the potted trees. In fact, we didn't even get to these trees right here, which I totally forgot about. So maybe we'll come back and do those. Only specific trees though. But again, the in-ground trees I wanna show you but only really specific trees because uh, there's a lot to cover. And to be honest with you, all of them are not really doing all that great because they're quite young. Um, there are some very young trees, however, like my Violette Sapor here, that looks incredible. It's got fruit on it, four fruits at such a young age, just rooted this, this winter time. And now we've pinched it and it's gonna put out even more fruit for us. So I'm really excited for this variety to have it in the ground, as well as the uh, the Thermalito over here from my buddy Doug. We showed you that guys this one. Again, another really precocious, seemingly easy fruiter, perhaps even quite early. I know it's early for him in California, one of his earliest, if not his earliest. Here we have a uh, Neruchiola de Elba, which we also showed you guys in part one or part two. And it's putting out main crop right now. And as a result, I think because we forced the main crop to form, there's a lot more main crop down in here. A lot of that Breba started to drop off. We had some that dropped off, I think because of uh, the change in weather. If it just gets too cold. Um, we have some other trees down in here that aren't doing too well. These are very young, weak trees. And what I think I'm gonna have to do is come in here and put a cup over top of these. That's one thing I totally forgot about. I need to do that. Put a cup over them, which creates a humidity dome. Help them get to a larger size, hopefully, and make sure you, you kind of weigh down that cup, which is gonna um, make sure it doesn't blow away. Here we have some cuttings that I literally just stuck in the ground. These are from Herman, off of his tree. This is Vasilika Black which I think has some potential, of course, because he's got it growing in the ground where he's at. Definitely looks like a tasty fig. So we'll see how that one goes. And another one that's uh, pretty precocious is actually the Borgia Soak Grease. And you can see that down in here. I mean, look at that. Really vigorous, easy fruiter. We pinched it, it's doing phenomenal. Um, our San Baggio, for those of you guys who saw that video, it's coming back. My brother had stepped on this one, but it is coming back. Um, we also have in the ground St. Martin, and some of the main crop is, looks like it's going to fall off. Um, we had two Breba, three Breba, I think, that fall fallen off so far. We also ripened a Breba so far this year, but the main looks like it's not doing too hot. And I think it has a lot to do with pinching. I really do. I think the pinching kind of aborts or takes away the energy from other figs on the tree, whether that's main crop or Breba. I think the energy just gets directed elsewhere. It looks like I'm going to lose quite a few. I mean, it's not looking good. I don't, I don't know. They don't usually get this yellow for no reason, but they don't feel soft. They don't feel like they're going to fall off. So. Who the hell knows? Uh, this is the Black Madeira KK, guys, that I've, I had in a, a 30 gallon last year. Downsized it to a 15 just so I could put it away in storage. And then we planted it out this year. It's putting out tons of figs. Uh, probably more than if I had it in a container, to be perfectly honest with you. Um, every node on every branch is basically putting out some figs. We even got some probably down in here yeah 
and I could pinch these lower shoots, but I decided I want I want these lower shoots to grow because that's eventually what's going to take over this winter time is that this whole trunk here probably is going to get killed all the way down to the base. Here's some more progressed fruits, and I expect probably some black Madeira KK, maybe even by mid-August. That would be really something. Um, our Daloso finally uh, got off to a, a start here after getting a really bad head start. I don't know why. Very strange. We pinched our Blanche to do Cezanne. Very much so looking forward to eating more figs off of this, this variety. It is so good. Our uh, Black BD-10 actually does really well here. And I'm going to pinch this limb here, I think. Because if you look in there, there should be two dots. should be two nodes. Um, this stuff here, these new limbs coming out, I want to take these off because I just want one limb to continue to grow. I want these limbs to be very thick, as thick as possible. Um, so again, back in here as an example, we'll take this off. Um, and we've taken off lower shoots down in here that were also growing. It actually doesn't look like it's fruiting for me, which is very disappointing because I thought it was going to fruit. Actually, it is down in here. So there is some fruits on the lower shoots here. There's about four or five figs. Uh, maybe there's more on the back on this limb, but maybe some of these were pinched a bit too soon. I don't know. So we need to wait. I think I'm going to evaluate this limb here to see if I can really pinch it come back and get a closer look. Um, my Fico Love is just still just wants to grow and grow. Uh, we did girdle this recently. We talked about that in a video. And so far, I'm not seeing any significant results um, from that. But we're going to keep an eye on it. It hasn't really been that long, to be honest with you, since I made that video. Here's another tree that just needs some help. It could already be dead to be honest with you, uh, which would be really disappointing because this one is one that I really wanted. And uh, this could, I think this may be the only one I have or, um, yeah, I think this is the only one I have. So we need to get a cup on this thing immediately to maybe save it. Um, I have a number of them <laughs> in the ground here that really just need some help. Um, I think there's only two in this row or three in this row here that I'm standing in or in this planting that I'm standing in. Here's Victoria. It just wants to grow, man. Same thing with Smith. It just wants to grow. When they get cut back like this, Victoria already takes a number of years to fruit anyway. So I don't know. We need to slow down the vigor somehow. Here's my golden rainbow. And this is a extremely vigorous tree. But it is an exceptionally precocious fruiter. Even as cutting, this thing was trying to put out fruits, and that is going to be a winner in the ground, 100%. I can't really wait for that one. I mean, the flavor I'm sure is pretty good, but the fact that it's such a big honey fig that fruits early, I know it fruits as early as Ron de Bordeaux. Uh, that's what Ben told me in Seattle. So excited for that. Uh, what other trees do I really want to point out to you guys? We have some Pastillieri forming over here. That's Nero 600M. My M. Pilizari, we just planted this one. Shout out to Big Bill, he gave me that tree. It's already fruiting. And the biggest surprise of them all, somehow I managed to slow down the vigor on this tree. It wasn't gonna fruit. It's been taking me forever. This is called Sobon Blue Green. And I have a feeling this is something by a different name called Balone. You can see there's a praying mantis there in the back. But it's finally fruiting, so we'll get to see what the hell that one's about. Man, that takes that fig took me, I think, three years. Some of these do. You know, if they're just too vigorous like this Noir de Barbantane is right now, good luck. So a bit of a shame, but it is what it is. And if let me take you guys over to the other side where some other trees are. I want to show you some real special varieties over there. So far, though, in this little section, the big winner is the Golden Rainbow, Thermalito, Violet Support, Borgia Soak Grease. I think Neruciola de Elba has some potential. 
Uh, same thing with St. Martin, to be honest with you, even though it's dropping figs. Um, I think uh, Blanche should do Cezanne, probably has some potential. So does Black Beauty 10. Um, they seem to be good fruiters. Everything else is a bit too young or in a weird position to really not have this situation next year. Like the Black Meteor KK probably won't be in this position next year. Um, but we'll see if I can get some nice fruits off of that next year. My plan is to really cut it down and then cover the base with a lot of these trees. We talked, hopefully either it came out already or it will come out soon, talking about my method of winter protection because that's, it is really important and that's something I want to mention. It's not, it shouldn't be overlooked. Here's a Taramo unknown that I air layered off the uh, mother tree that I had last year. The mother tree was in a one foot high raised bed, completely above grade. And we got tons of growth because it was so high up. It had access to so much more heat than every other fig. It grew, put out some fruit. I mean, it was, it was incredible. Um, I've never seen a fig grow like that. And then we got this air layer, put it in a five gallon size pot and it is branched out real nicely. It's putting out fruit somewhere in here, definitely on these new limbs. And I think lower on the, uh, lower on the tree and these lower limbs. This is what I really want to preserve is these lower limbs because these are going to be probably the permanent structure of these trees. I mean, it would be nice and I don't think I'm going to protect these like I'm going to do the other ones. <clears throat> but, um, excuse me guys, I think these are just going to be left out in the open to fend for themselves. We'll do some minor, minor protection to make sure they live but nothing really serious. Here's a pastelliere from a conservatory in France to find a different strain of pastelliere. We actually have a number of pastelliere's here in the ground. We have one called um, Constance. This one comes from an Italian source. Uh, we also have one that I showed you guys in the beginning, or just not too long ago, maybe five minutes ago. That one comes from Rain Tree Nursery. So We've got four different pastillieres in the ground. Here's a hardy Chicago type. It's putting out fruit. It seems to be a nice little precocious, early to waken um, hardy Chicago type. I don't know. Seems to be pretty good. I know Big Bill recommends that one. We have some other ones here. This is a one that I'm really excited for in the ground. Violette de Marseille, which is uh, very closely, if not the same, as a black celeste. We have Fico Seco, which is probably also black celeste, or um, it's probably a fig called Moro de Caneva, I'm sorry. Here's my Constance. Look how much more vigorous this one seems. Really getting a nice, off to a nice start. <clears throat> you have some others that just taking a while to get going, not a huge deal. But I wanna show you guys a couple more really quickly to end this tour because I have some that are really performing well. Here is a uh, Ron de Bordeaux. Finally woke up and it had a re-sprout from way low and uh, it put out a shoot over there. And, you know, it's, it's coming back, but I was actually thinking it was gonna be dead, to be honest with you. Here's a pretty good one. It seems to be quite precocious, although Again, a lot of these trees were just planted this year, so it's hard to say how they'll do next year. But here's LSU Huye, putting out some nice fruits in here. All, all these limbs, really nice to see that. Um, there's Texas BA1, supposed to be different than Smith, although it looks very similar, acts very similar. That just wants to grow and grow. Here's my Toronto Unknown that came back from the dead, it seems like. Man, these things are very resilient. White Marseille, another one that seems to do really well here in the ground. It did survive the wintertime, and there's a Breba down in here. And it's got pretty good main crop that's coming in. And if I take you guys down, most of these are just young trees again. Very specific varieties that I'm after. 
Um, here is one that is probably the star of them all. And I have a number of these in the ground for a real specific reason. And every little position here in the yard, there's at least one of these somewhere. This is something called uh, Campaneri. And you can see it's got fruits all over this tree. It's very early. It's a very, very hardy tree. It's very old. It comes from an area outside of Paris. And this one's gonna be a winner here. I have, I think, about seven of those trees. And then here is another one that's doing really well, Blue Celeste. You can see the fruits on here that I didn't even have to pinch this one, even though I did later on, and I didn't have to pinch the Campaneri either. It just formed fruits on its own, being here in the ground, young trees, I'm just shocked. Here's another that does really well in the ground here is uh, Negretta. You can see the pink stems, the pink petioles, the figs. Very nice tree. And then some others down here that we just put in the ground and they should be fruiting. I have no doubts that they would. And we'll see how they do this winter. But I have no doubts that they're going to perform pretty well next year as well. Um, after our next winter. These are Long de Out right here, Long de Dute. Excuse me. We've got oh, Azores Dark, which believe it or not is probably the last in-ground fig to wake up that's gonna fruit this year. So this one got the worst head start and it is covered. It will be covered very soon head to toe and fruit. Every single node off of this is going to be fruiting. And all these really weak, thin branches too. It's kind of nuts. And then the same thing over here with my LSU Champagne. This guy's putting out some nice fruit set. These were all though 10 gallon size pots that we put in the ground and for them not to fruit would be a kind of crazy. Um, but we did chop them back, and sometimes when you chop them back like that, they're gonna be put in a position, as I've said before, where they just wanna grow and grow and grow, and that's it. So um, I think the big winners in the yard are probably gonna be something around the lines of like Hardy Chicago, Campaneri, Pastiliere. Um, we may get a Violette de Bordeaux type that comes in strong, maybe Ron de Bordeaux in time. Um, Blue Celeste, Black Celeste, I think all those figs are gonna become a standard here. And then we have some figs that really could potentially do well in the form of Borges Oak Reese, Thermalito, Violette Support, Neruccio de Elba, also some green skin figs that are a bit late, like uh, Gayette, Blanche de Duce Cezanne, St. Martin, White Madeira number one. Um, we just may have some of those trees come through in time and do really well for us. I think it's gonna be a bit tricky. Also Taramo Unknown, I think, should do really well here. It's done really well in Maryland. Um, but I think there's gonna be some clear winners in time and those are the, the about the seven or so-ish figs I mentioned in the beginning. Um, we could go over these little trees here. These are some younger trees that we just put into, ten, into five gallon size pots. These were either one gallons or air layers or rootstock. Uh, these are the trees that are gonna be my production trees next year. Uh, I just want them to grow really well, set themselves up for a good season next year because then we're going to be up potting them into 10 gallon size pots. The goal is to get them fully rooted out in this size. Here's my uh, Azores Dark. This is a rooted cutting. I have actually a rooted cutting, cutting that I'm going to sell pretty soon that has some fruit on it. So they're very, it's a very, very easy fruiter. It's, an, it's kind of insane how easily it fruits. Same thing I said, the same thing about Golden Rainbow. It's kind of nuts. Here's Azores Dark as well, an air layer that we took off the mother tree. 
we let one limb come up from the base and some of these lower limbs, some of these lower nodes are not going to fruit, but up in here it is. And I'll show you another Azores Dark that's performing way better. This guy's got fruit pretty much all up and down the limbs, and then it's got new growth coming out that we then pinched as well. And that's gonna have some new figs on it. What isn't really performing well is the Smiths that I have, and I can't really figure out why. It seems like they're not getting the greatest nutrients, to be honest. Some of the leaves look a bit yellow, a bit pale, um, and I'm not really liking that. So we're gonna have to, I think, come in here and feed these specific trees, but they just wanna grow. They don't wanna fruit right now. I guess that's you know, on them. Here's a Campaneri that we grafted, and it's actually putting out a fruit for us. Like I said, very precocious, Varieties. Here's another Campanaria that we grafted, and I think this one's going to put out a fruit, if I'm not mistaken. That nah, doesn't look like it. Um, here's an Ishia Black. Again, doesn't look very good. A lot of these trees right here <laughs> on this section don't really look too great. I don't know why that is exactly. Here's another Ishia Black from UC Davis. This one looks a lot better. This is a rooted cutting I got from Harvey. So perhaps it's the source here. Maybe they just need a little bit of food. Here's some Smiths from my air layers last year and these guys are fruiting. We showed you guys these. All three of them are fruiting and they look just really not as healthy as the other ones. They don't look as healthy as my mother Smith. So very strange. Across the board, I would say just about every smith I have that's not a bit older doesn't look very healthy. I don't know what that's about. Here is a uh, Narino. This one's going to be, I think, a winner as well on the ground. I forgot about this guy. This is very similar to, it's the same thing as Moro di Caneva, a very old Italian fig, one of the oldest Italian figs that exists. And these old figs, like Fico Love, Moro de Caneva, Campaneri, Hardy Chicago. That's why they do so well on the ground. We also have Cole Noir in here, Lampira 1. We've got some other graphs going. This here is a, a very special fig to me. We'll see if it ends up fruiting this year. We've got some other really special figs. We also have Aishia Black from a conservatory in France and this is going to be I think the real uh, winner because I really like Aishia Black. I don't think it's going to do well on the ground but we have it in pots as we showed you guys down here for production next year. I think that fig is going to be an overall huge winner in my climate and um, I, would put it, I would put it in my top five. At least certainly in my one of the most hopeful figs that I can grow, um, that I'm most hopeful for. This one though comes from that conservatory which should be a lot healthier. It shouldn't have that crazy fig mosaic virus that the USDA version has um, that of course has been removed over time. It's The disease has gotten better and if you... It's the one fig guys that just gets murdered by the disease. Um, out of all the other figs, it seems to be the, really the only one. And it's finally outgrown it. There's some strains out there that are very healthy, and if you feed them well, they will outgrow it. It just takes some time, but this one seems, first glance, to be a lot healthier, even though they don't look very, <clears throat> very healthy. They seem to be doing a lot better than some other rooted cuttings I have. I do also have one of these in the ground, and I have another one that I'm also going to put in the ground. So we'll see if they are indeed the same thing. We don't even know, but it's supposed to be the same fig, just with not as much of the disease. And then here is a, an RDB that my buddy Chris gave me. We're going to put this one in a 10 gallon size pot next year as well. I thought I had killed my RDB, but very recently it, it came back from the base. So very excited for all that and everything over here that's been going on. Here are some trees that we're going to put in the ground 
others that we're going to put in containers. Um, mostly in the ground though, and some of these are going to be put into, you know, kind of the style that we showed you guys in the first, the first tour is that they're going to be planted like three or four per pot. And I have some gaps to fill, like there's a gap right there. There's some other trees in here that you don't really notice because you can't really see them, but they're just not doing well or they are not really uh, doing anything. <laughs> so, um, you know, they were either meant for rootstock or what, and we're gonna rip them out as an example. This guy down in here, the Black Donov, and there's another rootstock over here. Um, so we can rip some of these out. There's another dead rooted cutting that we planted and it didn't, didn't make it. So we can transplant and put some things in their spots and that way not really take up much more room, not really add many more pots. In fact, today there's a lot on the list of things to do. I also have to come in here and um, definitely uh, turn on the irrigation, I think. It's looking like the soil in some of these pots is quite dry, even with the rain that we got. So I wanna make sure that none of the figs are gonna be dropping like we showed you guys earlier, is that some of these figs are falling off. Um, so it's really important that if they are falling off, we need to check the water. Of course, it could be variety dependent, but I think water is gonna really help the situation um, certainly make sure that they hold on or have a better chance to hold on than others so who knows this entire limb here was covered in fruits so is this so we may have to come in here and water very specific trees but my opinion so far is that they're not dry enough to really warrant fruit drop and um, I think it has a lot to do with the varieties that I'm looking at here the, the varieties that are dropping fruits <clears throat> are probably Smyrna's or probably need a few years to get their act together. But anyway, guys, that was part three of the tour. That's pretty much everything that's going on back here with the figs, the in-ground trees, the potted trees, the new trees that are going to go in the ground. Um, oh, I guess there's one little thing to show you guys. I forgot because I don't really go over here very much. These are the greenhouse trees that I want to show you. And we'll end with this. Maybe I'll just combine this whole thing into one video. I don't know. It's a long video though. But here we are in the greenhouse and these we just planted really not that long ago. And this has taken off the Capra fig. We have two varieties of Capra fig. The third one here just did not take but believe it or not, I could get capra figs right now. I think these guys will fruit for me. And maybe I should pinch them to get more branching um, rather than having just straight tall limbs of it. I don't know. It might be worth it to put some hard thought into that. Here's our panache. Did not transplant well at all. Didn't like this environment. You could tell it's not really that healthy to begin with. And uh, I pinched it to see if I can get some branching. What it did transplant well is the Coldedon Blanc. And even the leaves that currently existed just don't look that great. So it is putting out new leaves, so that's good to see. Same thing with the Colonel Littmans. Didn't transplant well, but you know they're off to a, uh, a good start now. And I should come in here probably and feed them, to be honest with you, because they're not going to be hit by the cold like these in-ground trees will. So a nice little dose of uh, fertilizer is certainly gonna help them rather than probably hurt them. Um, but yeah, there's a lot to do out here, guys. I need to get on it. So thank you all for watching and uh, we'll talk to you all soon, right? Take care.